This is a set of slides that introduce the question of uh, why connectrons might be important. Uh, the questions that I'd like to ask and possibly answer are, how do theoretical advances in genomics, how can they be translated into practical solutions? And how can entrepreneurial activity be focused as part of this uh, activity? In the last century, the research on the funding in the biological sciences has been characterized by small, isolated sciences that are nonlinearly coupled to each other. Examples of this are protein or DNA or RNA isolation by chromatography and spectroscopy, or the characterization of structures by X-ray crystallography and NMR or the characteristic of single genes and its mutations and their effects, or clinical trials to determine the side effects of introducing new chemicals into the system. The publication in Nature more than 50 years ago by Watson and Crick of the structure of DNA was a very significant event because it eventually became clear that DNA was the information carrier for, for cells. The second transition occurred in the sequencing of small bacterial, archaeal, and even eukaryotic genomes. And then the sequencing by the NIH consortium and Solera of the, of the human genome. Uh, some years ago, Nature had a celebration of the 50th anniversary of the publication of the Watson and Crick uh, paper and the completion of the uh, human genome. Um, I made this uh, picture on the right here uh, at the 25-year point between the, uh, the Watson and Crick paper and the sequencing of the genome. Uh, Nature chose to use my, uh, my graphic as a way of uh, representing uh, DNA. The third uh, transition, I think, occurred in uh, September of uh, a couple of years ago in science when the Japanese National Genome Project that is at Riken uh, made the transcriptome of the mouse genome. A transcriptome is all the DNA of a genome that is transcribed into RNA. Some of the RNA is translated into proteins, but um, a third of the RNA doesn't produce uh, proteins, and uh, this is very interesting. So in the last uh, couple of years, uh, there have been a proliferation of ohms. Uh, first, there was the genome. And now there's the transcriptome. People are talking about and working on the proteome, metabolome, interferome as a high-level uh, post-transcriptional gene expression regulation mechanism. Um, but uh, my sense is, is that the interferome is, is not a strong enough mechanism for the global control of gene expression. Uh, if um, if all genes are transcribed, then all of the RNA will act to uh, silence genes. Uh, there must be, to my way of looking, a, a mechanism that regulates gene expression as a function of the state of the cell. And uh, I've been working towards this. So this is a rather primitive a graphical view of what happened in the last century. There were these small, isolated, linear sciences chromatography, spectroscopy, structuring. And then uh, when the human genome was finished, although the others uh, also qualify, uh, we have a new uh, level that uh, spans uh, all of these uh, small isolated linear sciences and gives us complete information about the information that's stored in the, in the genome. The transcriptome is uh, yet another level of, uh, of uh, activity of uh, structuring because it presents uh, that portion of the genome that uh, actually is uh, transcribed and therefore the information is used by producing the RNA. Uh, and then of course the others, the interferome, the metabolome, the proteome could be viewed as being higher level uh, 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 observations about what's happening uh, within the cell. But, but I leave a gap here because the uh, I'd argue that there's one of the ohms is still missing. There needs to be a layer of control 
that decides which genes should be transcribed and therefore which proteins would be produced, uh, although there may be other mechanisms for regulation. Uh, and the, but these uh, 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 this layer should um, depend on the conditions in the cell, in the tissue, and the stage of development, and of course should also provide for um, differentiation of cells. So uh, I'd like to argue that the connectrome uh, should uh, could and should occupy this uh, place in the hierarchy of sciences and structure determination. That the connectrome is a computable uh, entity uh, that can then be used to uh, uh, understand uh, how uh, behavior is regulated. So uh, the connectrome is needed to determine the organismic context in which the, a gene is to be expressed. And uh, the connectrome of the mouse genome that I've been investigating is uh, actually rather complex. And uh, so I've spent a lot of time now thinking about, um, about that. But uh, <laughs> the joke from the music man is, but there's, there's trouble in River City. And uh, because uh, proteins and eventually genes were easy to find in the last century, most of the physical and, and informatic scientists are gene-centric. I mean, all of this is changing now in time. Um, until the publication of the mouse transcriptome a couple of years ago, some uh, scientists were actually throwing away the non-coding RNAs and saying they were just uh, irrelevant, they were just uh, pseudogenes. Um, so the, the gene versus non-coding uh, RNA problem um, has existed uh, some time and some time ago. Um, the problem uh, with the gene-centric view is that whenever a gene is opened for transcription, well then one or more uh, proteins are produced. And these uh, proteins go and do whatever they want, sometimes causing havoc if the gene is improperly uh, uh, transcribed. Uh, the virtue of the non-coding RNAs uh, is that the non-coding RNAs are pure control uh, because they, they, don't, they do not produce proteins, otherwise they'd be called gene duplications. Uh, when the non-coding RNAs transcribe, they only produce control of expression and there's no uh, protein side effects. So, uh, so there's a balance between um, the uh, gene coding uh, control of expression and the non-coding uh, control of expression. Um, only about a third of the transcripts are non-coding RNAs, at least as far as Riken is concerned, uh, and, but they produce half of the connectrons, uh, as I've determined. Uh, so the transcriptome uh, has genes and non-coding RNAs, and then the connectrome has uh, genes and uh, non-coding RNAs also, but they're in a stronger proportion. That is to say, half of the connectrons uh, in the uh, connectrome are produced by the non-coding RNAs, whereas uh, in the transcriptome, only about a third of the transcripts are non-coding transcripts.